far, we have talked about true friends, what it is to have a true friend, be a true friend. And we also talked about bad friends, how to avoid some bad friends. Uh, we talked about best friends. And then we talked about last week, no friends. Did anybody that had no friends get a friend? All right. Good. Lots of friends around here. Amen. Tonight, we're going to talk about this, negative friends, negative friends. Do you have negative friends? If so, you better watch out. Before long, you'll start to become negative too. All right, so it's very, very important that you are cautious about who your friends are. And especially, you don't need any negative energy. I like that word, negative energy going on around you need, you need people that will be around you. They're optimistic. They're yes, you can, not no, you can't, all right? Uh, unless, it's a, unless you're doing bad things, then that's a good thing. You need those kind of friends, all right? But if you have people that are just tearing you down and just, just holding you back spiritually, uh, emotionally, uh, get rid of those friends, all right? There's plenty of good friends around here. I can look around here and see about two or three good friends in here. Now, now lots of good friends in this room tonight, and so you don't need negative friends. You need people that will build you up and not tear you down. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about this topic of negative friends tonight. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, please help God's people to pay attention tonight and to listen they need to get away from those people that are uh, bringing them down. Lord, I pray that they would find uh, optimistic, helpful, encouraging uh, people that exhort them uh, uh, in the Christian life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we'll jump right into it. If you have uh, your midweek messenger, we, call, we used to call it a midweek messenger. We had a lot of stuff on there. Uh, your prayer sheet. If you have your prayer sheet tonight, flip it over on the back. There's a place for you to take some notes. Uh, take some of these notes. I, I typed them up on the screen for you so it's easy. If you didn't hear me, you can always look up there and get the points up there. All right, point number one. Point number one. You become what you hang around. You become what you hang around. Uh, look at Proverbs chapter 13 and verse number 20. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse number 20. We'll look at some scriptures as well tonight, so uh, make sure you have your Bible with you and something to write with. Proverbs 13 verse 20. And I'll use some of your help tonight. Um, who'd like to read Proverbs 13 20? All right, Brother Mundo, read that verse for us nice and loud. All right, so we have a comparison here. He that walketh with wise men shall be what? Wise. So if you are, uh, if we were to use modern vernacular with this, all right, if you're hanging around wise people, guess what? You're going to be wise. So I think on the contrary, uh, you become what you hang around. So we could say if you are hanging around negative people, then you too will become negative. Listen, if you don't want to be negative, then you need to get away from negative people, all right? Uh, because two negative people, have you ever seen magnets? You, you, you know, have you ever done that cool thing with magnets? You put uh, 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 either a negative side and a negative side of a magnet together. What happens? What do they do? They, re they, re they repel each other, all right? They push away from each other. Uh, that's exactly what's going to happen if you have two negative friends, all right? And so you need to stay around those people that will encourage you, all right? So um, if it's true that you become wise, if you hang around wise people, then you must hang around, uh, if you hang around negative people, you also will become negative as well, all right? Turn to uh, 1 Corinthians 5, 6, and who'd like to read that one? 1 Corinthians 5, 6. All right, 1 Corinthians 5, 6. Brother Horace, can you read that one for us? All right, so we see here a situation where a little leaven will ruin the whole lump. All right, just a little bit. A little bit of leaven ruins the whole lump, all right, or leaven at the whole lump. 
Uh, you ever heard this phrase, one rotten apple, what does it do? Spoils the whole bunch, all right? So, if you want to avoid being negative, be careful around about hanging around negative people. Because if you hang around negative people, before long, everyone around you is eventually going to become negative. Why? Because one rotten apple will spoil the whole bunch. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump, all right? Uh, so be very careful about who you hang around. That is so important that you choose your friends wisely, all right? Uh, find those people that encourage you and lift you up, not those that are constantly tearing you down, all right? Um, and, and by the way, you need to encourage your friends as well. But I don't know who I'm t talking to tonight. Maybe I'm talking to some people that are the negative friend, or I might be talking to some people that are hanging around negative people, all right? Or they're trying to avoid negative people. So if you're the negative person, stop it, all right? <laughs> Uh, uh, or uh, if you are negative, well, start changing and start lifting up your friends, exhorting them, encouraging them, instead of pulling them down, all right? Uh, but if you are a person who has friends that are negative, drop them like a hot cake and get on to someone that is encouraging and helpful and strengthening to you, all right? You become what you hang around, all right? Number two, number two. Your attitude and mannerisms will change if you are friends with negative people. Boy, if you keep hanging around negative people, before long, your attitude's going to change. And your mannerisms and how you act are going to change. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33. Who wants to read that one for me? All right, we'll try to pick other people. Thanks, Brother Mundo, for your willingness. Uh, Brother Jarrell, will you read 1 Corinthians 15, 33? Mm, evil communications corrupt good manners. Wow. So listen, if we're not careful, one of the first signs of people changing is their attitude. Their attitude. Uh, uh, working with young people for a lot of years, uh, 20 years this year, I think, uh, what, that's how long I've been working, you know, in our Christian school. Uh, one thing that I've always noticed with young people, I can always tell when they're changing because their attitude changes. Right, Brother Horace? You've been working with young people a lot. What, did you think I was talking about you? Do you have an attitude? Is that attitude? <laughs> no, one of the first things you see about young people is their attitude. I mean, it's, you, you just, you can spot it. Like, here is a person doing well and all of a sudden you, you sense a change in their attitude and most of the time you can kind of go back and something's going on and a lot of times it's their friends it's their friends are hanging around unfortunately um, so your attitude and manner mannerisms will change when you are hanging around negative people when they're tearing you down you're I mean it's hard to have a good attitude when someone's constantly being pessimistic and, and negative all the time right uh, you're going to have a hard time staying on top side about things when someone is constantly, no, it's no good, it's not going to happen, there's no hope. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, you can do that for a while, but eventually they're, they're just going to drag you down. Your, your, your attitude and the way you act is going to change, all right? Kinda, you're going to start walking around like Eeyore. Remember Eeyore, you know, it's always raining over his head only, you know. Everything's terrible. Uh, your attitude and mannerisms will change if you are friends with negative people. Proverbs 4.23. Turn to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Make sure the visitors, not visitors, but uh, <laughs> make sure you guys get some. Uh, did you guys get one of our prayer sheets when you came in? All right, one of our ushers will get one of those for you. And uh, we'll get that for you in just a second. Proverbs 4.23. All right, who wants to read that one? Lily, can you read that for us? Proverbs 4.23. All right, your heart, you want to keep it. That word keep it is kind of like put a lock and chain on it, all right? And you've got to do that diligently. And you need to be careful because when you choose bad friends, negative friends, it affects eventually your heart. And from that are the issues of life, the way you start acting, the way that you start talking, your attitude. 
All of that comes from the heart, and that's why you've got to guard your heart. You've got to lock it up because those negative people eventually, they'll wear on your heart and change your attitude and how you act. So it's very important you don't have negative friends because that'll affect your attitude and your manner. Here's a little, here's a little uh, self check for you, all right? If you sense your attitude changing, if you sense a change in the, your manners and how you're acting, check your friends, check your friends, all right? And then if they're negative, then, you know, either ask them to change. If they won't change, then move on, all right? Number three, I'm trying to help you tonight get some good friends. You, you keep on keeping those, keep on having those bad friends, you will change. They want, I'll change them, Pastor. I've heard that a hundred times. You will change, not them. So make sure that you choose good friends, all right? Negative friends, number three, negative friends will cause you to give up on your dreams and your ambitions. You want some people that will encourage you to reach your dreams, to, to go for it, to shoot for the stars. Uh, no, you can't make it. You're going to miss. <laughs> Thanks. That's exactly what kind of help you need. No, you need people that will help you reach your dreams and your ambitions. Turn to Numbers chapter 13, and we're going to read this one together. Numbers chapter 13 and verse 17. The book of Numbers chapter 13 and verse 17. Numbers 13 verse 17. Here's a case where some negative people influenced the results of a whole group of people, all right? Numbers 13, verse 17. And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, Get you up this way southward and go up into the mountain and see the land, what it is, and the people that dwelt therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many. And what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and what cities they be that they dwell in, whether uh, in tents or in strongholds, and what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not, and be ye of good courage and fear and, and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zen unto Rehob, as men came, uh, as men come to Hamath, and they ascended uh, by the south and came unto Hebron, where Ahiman and that guy and that guy and the children of Anak were. <laughs> you didn't know it either. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt, and they came unto the brook of Eskel and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they bare it between two upon a staff. And they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. The place was called the brook Eshkel because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from thence. Let's go to uh, verse number 30. Uh, verse number 20. Uh, actually, 28. Uh, actually, verse 27. Verse 27. And they told him and said, We came into the land whether thou sent us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. So we see here, these, there, were, there were sent 12, tri, uh, 12 spies, each from uh, representing one of the tribes of Israel, into this land to see if it were good to, to go in and possess it there of the promised land. Uh, so they went in. And there were 10 that came back and gave negative results. But two came back and gave good positive results, all right? And, and, and you see here in verse 27, some of the negative results they mentioned, all right? The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people. Here's one of those... Uh, positive, optimistic people uh, before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome it. All right. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched into the children of Israel saying the land 
through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Now, look at verse 14. And the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, and the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in this wilderness? And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be prey? Were it not bitter for us to return into Egypt? And they said one to another, Let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. Now hold on, folks. Were these not the people that were slaves in Egypt? And God sent them a deliverer in Moses and brought them into this promised land. And here they are at the doorstep of the promised land. And 12 spies go in, 10 come back, give negative results. And two say, hey, we can do it. Now guess what happened? They ended up not going in because of those 10 spies who gave negative, uh, a negative response. Listen, negative friends will cause you to give up your dreams and ambitions. Here it is, this whole group of people had to give up their dreams and ambitions because of a negative, negative friends here. People that, I don't know, maybe there were more spies there in that 10 that were negative. Maybe some of them probably thought that they could, but they went with the majority. And what happened? A lot of people's dreams were crushed and ambitions were, uh, were cut short because of negative friends. Folks, negative friends will cause you to give up your dreams and ambitions. You need positive, optimistic people around you. Amen? All right, number four, stay away from friends that are negative about the things of God. Boy, if you got people that, oh man, church this, the Bible that, oh, if they're that type of friend, you better get away from them because before long, you are going to act just like them. Matthew 19, 26. Matthew 19, verse 26. Who wants to read that one? Matthew 19, 26. All right, Brother Ramundo, I'll let you read another one. Matthew 19, 26. Hey, with God, all things are possible. So you need to be around people that think it is possible. They're not negative friends. Uh, and especially with the things of God. You know, you know what those Caleb and Joshua were saying? Listen, we have defeated armies much greater than this. And here we are, we're afraid of a couple giants in the land. I mean, surely God's big enough to defeat them, right? You need friends like that, that when they see an obstacle, they go, you know what? With God, we can do this, folks. Not tearing down the things of God, but building it up and saying that with God, we can do it. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Hebrews 10, 25. Who wants to read that one? All right, Sanji, Hebrews 10, 25. Let's take a look at it. Hebrews 10, 25. So first of all, we see the importance of church attendance. It says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Uh, that's so important. But you know, when we're here at church, we need to be exhorting one, among, one another, exhorting one another. That word exhort means to be lifting up, not tearing people down, not saying, boy, we can't do this, but we need to be lifting up each, each other. And it says so much the more as you see the day approaching. Hey, guess what? The Lord's coming is nigh. And as closer we get to it, the more we need to be exhorting one another. Why? Because we're living in some perilous times, and we're living in some times where people don't have much hope. I mean, the world doesn't think there's any hope, all right? If you don't believe me, just look at the news headlines. <laughs> there's no hope, right? 
But with God, all things are possible. And we can have hope. Amen. We need to be lifting up one another and encouraging one another. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. Let's look at that one together. Romans 8, 31. Got to get rid of them negative friends. I don't know who Nancy is, but get away from negative Nancys. Poor Nancy. Romans 8, 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen? That's what we need to be telling one another. Hey, if God be for us, who can be against us? We can do this as a church. Not tearing, oh boy, pastor says we're going to do this. That's a terrible idea. It ain't going to happen. No way is it going to happen. Wait, are we tearing down the vision? Or are we trying to lift up the vision and exhorting the vision? Amen? Let's build up one another as a church. Stay away from friends that are negative about the things of God because before long, you will too. Birds of a feather flock together. Exactly. All right, number five. Number five, do not allow yourselves to be negative to your friends. Think. All right? Yeah, I'll tell you why I put that there. Turn to Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. This is the key. The key verse. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 8. Do not allow yourself to be negative to your friends. So we've been talking about mainly about staying away from negative people, but now don't allow yourself to be negative to your friends, all right? And here's how you can avoid being negative to your friends. Are you ready? If here's the key, Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are, say it with me, whatsoever things are, Whatsoever things are, whatsoever things are, whatsoever things are, whatsoever things are of, if there be any, and if there be any, think on these things. If you're doing that, you're not going to be negative to your friends. Amen? You're going to be giving good reports. You're going to be giving praise. Amen? Why? We need to be positive and optimistic and exhorting one another. Think on these things. And the more you think about it, the more you will be like that. All right? We should be provoking our friends to good works. Hebrews 10, 24, write that verse down. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. You know, we were talking about uh, uh, friends who provoke unto bad works. We need to be provoking people to do good works with our words. You know, not tearing them down that they can't happen, but provoking them, encouraging them to good works, not being negative. All right. Number six, and lastly, when things aren't going very well for you, seek out friends that are optimistic. When things aren't going very well for you, seek out friends that are optimistic. You're not always going to have everything going your way. You're going to have a bad day, right? It's going to happen. When you're having days like that, get around optimistic people, all right? Don't hang around other people that are, yep, you're right, it's a bad day, horrible day. <laughs> no, you got to encourage yourself, amen? Now, there are times, you know, the Bible says David encouraged himself. There's times where you're going to have to pull yourself up and uh, encourage yourself. But try to get around some people that are optimistic, that will help you and encourage your spirit. Amen. And uh, uh, Philippians 4, 4. Let's look at that one. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. You're, you're there in Philippians, so you should be close. Who wants to read that verse? All right, Miss Charlene, will you read that for us? It says, how always? Wow, I got to rejoice in the Lord always? Hey, and again, I say rejoice. Be around those people that are always rejoicing, optimistic. And lastly, Proverbs 27, verse 9. Proverbs 27, verse 9. Proverbs 27, verse 9. 
ointment and perfume rejoice the heart, so doth the sweetness of a man's friend by hearty counsel. Listen, when you get good, hearty, comforting, encouraging, optimistic counsel from a friend, it's sweet. It's really sweet. And you guys need to be careful about being around negative people. They're going to tear you down. Like I said, a number... And number one there, uh, you become what you hang around. You hang around negative people before long. Watch it. You'll be negative too. So let's start hanging around optimistic people. And let's choose to be optimistic to our friends and encourage them and not negative, not tearing them down by Philippians chapter verse 8. All right. Think on these things. All right. Oh, let's take our uh, prayer sheets out tonight. And uh, we'll take some prayer requests.